Dr. Pam Thompson. I'm a psychologist and a professional life coach, and I'm here with Dr. Vanessa Hall of MobileMedicine.net, and she has joined me today to talk with you about health care from a physical perspective while I talk a little bit about mental health care. We're here to give our top strategies for how it is that you can maximize your mental and physical health. So we've just boiled everything down today to the real quick and dirty. <laughs> and we're just going to be really just moving through some key points that we think are really important for people to concentrate on to really optimize wellness and, and the maintenance of good health, good energy, good relationships, a good life, period. So Dr. Hall, thank you so much for being Glad here Glad to be here. Today. Yes, I, I love her because she's so passionate about what she does. She really is passionate about wellness and people feeling better and doing better. And, and being better. And being better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you had to think of what your top four strategies would be mm -hmm. for maximizing physical health, what would you suggest to people? Well, I would start with nutrition. Mm. Um, I think people don't realize just w what exactly nutrition is. You know, you think about you have to eat to have energy. But it's more than that. Um, those nutrients in foods, whether it's proteins, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and other nutrient cofactors are critically important for every metabolic reaction in the body. Mm -hmm. So the brain, for instance, cannot make serotonin without adequate amounts of vitamin B6 or adequate amounts of the amino acid tryptophan. Mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't happen. And so, and you can go down the list for every, every reaction in the body, mm -hmm. from breathing mm. to thinking to walking, requires vitamin and mineral cofactors, um, as well as carbs, proteins, and uh, fats, mm -hmm. good fats, to function properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the other key point people need to understand is the human body is a miraculous thing. Okay. Clearly, man could not have made this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the human body, despite what we do to it, continues to function. We mm -hmm. know people that live on nicotine and caffeine and biscuits, mm -hmm. <laughs> and somehow they keep functioning. Especially in the South. Right. <laughs> and what the body does is it, it has its list of priorities. You know, your brain functioning, breathing, your heart pumping, all of those mm -hmm. really top priorities, they will get the nutrients first. Everything else comes later. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, and we've experienced this, all of us have experienced this, mm -hmm. the immune system is somewhere down here. So if you think about it, if you're not being attacked by some staph bug or a flu bug, your immune system isn't doing very much and it doesn't require a lot of nutrients to, to function because it's just sort of on hold. Mm. So your body says, well, here's a place we can not pay much attention to and we'll put all our nutrients in more critical functions. And so when we are burning the candle at both ends, mm -hmm. eating that poor diet, particularly the d diet high in sugar, mm -hmm. um, not getting enough sleep, lo and behold, we get sick. And then we wonder what happened. Yeah. Well, what happened is the immune system wasn't prepared to mount an attack, an attack mm -hmm. to defend your body against whatever. Mm. Okay, so nutrition is the foundation for good physical and mental well-being. Absolutely. So, so let's talk about how do you get those nutrients. Well, you have to eat the right food. Mm -hmm. That is fruits and vegetables of a variety of colors. Um, you want to get low fat sources of meat, you want fish. Now if you're vegetarian, that's a special consideration which would be another conversation. Mm -hmm. But in general, you want to get high quality sources of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So you want to get complex carbohydrates, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. You want to get good sources of protein. Uh, meat, fish, lean meats, mm -hmm. uh, poultry, beans, soybeans, things along that nature. Um, whole grains like brown rice, 
Mm. You know, that would be far better than white rice, which is basically stripped of, the, of a lot of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. uh, clean water, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you want to avoid re or minimize refined carbohydrates. That's things like white bread, white mm -hmm. flour. Mm -hmm. Basically, the, the nutritional aspect has been stripped from it, and then it's fortified with some, you know, folate or B vitamin or something, mm -hmm. which is a fraction of the nutrients that are found in the whole grain. So uh, that's sort of the, the quick and dirty diet message. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't mention fast food or fried food because they're, they're really not <laughs> on the table. They're not on that list. Okay. Yeah. Now, I like fried food, and I eat it rarely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's we're not talking never. I like ice cream. Mm -hmm. It's once in a while. So it's not what you do 80% uh, 20% of the time. It's really what you do 80% of the time. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. What about the soy products? I mean, there's some controversy around that of late that should well, we eat them, soy, should we not? It's something that should be part of your comprehensive approach to healthy food, but it shouldn't be something that you just focus on eating. Yeah. Too okay. much of anything can be bad for uh -huh. you. Yeah. You know, I think uh, in the news last year, a young lady died because she drank too much water. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was really sad. Yes. But that's a, 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 a tragic example mm -hmm. of too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's try to keep some balance. Mm -hmm. Try to eat a variety of foods. Yes. Fresh is going to be best. Mm -hmm. So nutrition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, exercise. If you don't move it, you do lose it. Mm -hmm. As we age, it becomes more important to stay fit. Mm -hmm. um, elderly people who fall and break a hip, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times that is because they have poor balance, mm -hmm. because they have weak muscles, weak stabilizing muscles. Mm -hmm. um, keeping your heart healthy, mm -hmm. you know, it's a muscle like anything else. Mm -hmm. If it's not exercised, it doesn't function as well. Yes. And also, when you're stronger, you can recover from things yeah. faster. Um, exercise is important to maintain strong, healthy bones. They have shown that exercises helps lower your risk of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I believe, and I'm, don't quote me on this, but I'm 90% sure it also helps people who have Alzheimer's function better. Wow. wow. So exercise is another important aspect of maintaining health and wellness. And how much exercise because you know we hear different things about that too. I mean, well, I would say if you're not exercising at all, mm -hmm. anything on a regular basis is going to be better than what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking so. Yeah. So, um, but if you can do 30 minutes 3 times a week. And if you want to maximize that 30 minutes, you could do say a 20 minute walk. Mm -hmm. Ideally, at an alternating pace, mm -hmm. you know, where you walk fast or jog, and then you walk for a couple minutes, jog, walk, jog, walk. Hmm. Alternating the pace um, gets more out of that activity. Wow, okay. I didn't know that. Huh. So a 20-minute alternating pace is sort of equivalent to 40 minutes of a regular pace. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Um, well. Have you ever gotten on a treadmill and you started jogging and you're like <gasps> out of breath and you're like <gasps> and then five mm -hmm. minutes into it you've got this easy breath you're feeling good mm -hmm, definitely well that's because your body has adjusted yeah. to that and so now instead of burning calories how you were in the beginning it has adjusted and compensated and now you're on cruise control uh -huh. so when you change it up all the time the body doesn't adjust and it's using more energy I see so it's kind of the uh, same concept behind changing your weight routine every day or every right. other week or so so that the body doesn't get too accustomed to it exactly. and, and get into this cruise control Yeah, because mode. if you keep doing the same motion, um, the one of the main things is you're neglecting some of the other muscles. Uh -huh. And so if you want to get that total body workout, yes. you've got to use different Ex exercises, which will, because you know, you'll find a different sore spot when you change oh, yeah. your exercise. I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very aware. <laughs> yes, funny how that happens. Yes. yes. But you, to keep the body guessing is what you're saying. Yes, keep exactly. Keep it working harder uh, and optimally. Right. And you also want to incorporate some core strength, and yes. not just the cardio. Yes. Core strength is where all of your power comes mm -hmm. from, where your stability. 
Um, I'll give you an example. I did Pilates mm -hmm. uh, for a short time with the table. Mm -hmm. And they have an activity where you're on your hands and knees, mm -hmm. and then they attach the weight with the pulley to your foot. And you have to bring your foot around like this Whoa. and then back. Okay? Whoa. So when I first did this activity, I'm shaking like this, my leg is wobbling, <laughs> and I can barely stay on the table. Yeah. Okay? Eight weeks into it, I'm stable because my uh -huh. core muscles are stronger. stronger. Yes. Okay. This is really important yeah. for elderly and aging people. Uh -huh. Okay. Broken hips mm -hmm. from falls. People have a 25% mortality within the first one to two yeah. years okay. of any yeah. cause. So it's not necessarily that you have heart disease or this or that or the other. 25% no. of elderly people who break a hip are dead within two years. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's an amazing statistic. Yeah. Wow. We know that, for instance, Tai Chi lowers the risk of falling. Mm. It helps with core strength and balance. Uh. And so we really need to pay attention to our core muscles and our cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. And I would throw in some stretching. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of the tightest people in the world, and, you know, it's a challenge for me to stretch. Mm -hmm. But it becomes more and more important. Muscles work optimally when they're stretched and relaxed. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got nutrition. Mm -hmm. We've got exercise. Mm -hmm. Sleep. Wait, let's talk about sleep. Okay, sleep is critical. And we all feel better when we've had a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. But what sleep actually does, sleep restores us. Sleep, um, sleep is the time when your body re replenishes, mm -hmm. replaces, renews, um, cleans house. Mm -hmm. You know, all that housekeeping, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So think of it this way. When you're asleep, the body opens the cupboard and it checks to see what nutrients it has to do the functions it needs to do. So the immune system has to go through and clean out old cells that are dying or mm -hmm. dead or damaged. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the body has to uh, replace some muscle, uh, has to make some hormone, has to do whatever. Yeah. It goes to the cupboard and sees what's in the cupboard. Vitamins, minerals, nutrient cofactors, pro amino acids, mm -hmm. little fats, uh, good fats, mm -hmm. complex carbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then it looks to see what it has to repair. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't have what it needs to repair, <laughs> then you're really in trouble. However... It does this while you're asleep. That's the key. Yes. Yeah. So if you get two hours of sleep, you've had two hours of maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. So you really need to get your six, seven, eight hours of sleep so the body can repair all of the things that have gone wrong every day. You know, your computer, if you don't do a little maintenance on mm -hmm. your computer, you know how it gets bogged down. Mm -hmm. So you do a little defragmentation, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it works better. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's going on during sleep every night. Yeah. The wow. body is cleaning house and repairing and getting you ready for the next day. Yeah. Okay. And I know mentally the, our memories are consolidated while we sleep. You know, so the people who do the all-night crams and you go in to take the exam or do the big presentation, your brain has not had a chance to encode that memory without the sleep. So it is essential that we get it. less activity and less um, sh strain on the body's ability to repair itself is more. Less is more. Yes. yes. So you, you've got to sleep. And um, finally, pardon me, the whole spiritual and emotional aspects. Uh, several weeks ago, we did a talk on stress, yeah. okay, yeah. and I was talking about a book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. I highly recommend it if you want to understand what stress is doing mm. on a physiological level to your wow. body. We're talking about mental stress mm. um, as well as physical stress, but mental stress yeah. changes the physiology of your body. Mm. It utilizes more nutrients. Mm. Okay, so if you don't accommodate and get more nutrients, particularly B vitamins, for example, mm -hmm. 
when you're under more stress, you know, we all get depleted. You know, you're studying for that exam. It's finals time. Hmm. How many of us got sick right after finals were over? <laughs> Frequently. <laughs> yes. Like the next day. Okay. Yes. Because we were living on, you know, ho-hos, <laughs> coffee, Ramen and no sleep. <laughs> yes, right. right. Yeah, that is not the, the meals of champions. Yeah. And so you can go for a while, but eventually you, you run out. Run out, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, but that's an example of stress burning up nutrients, and now you're depleted. Yes. Okay. Um, of course, we all get the, the syndrome where your shoulders are growing out of your ears. <laughs> you know, your muscles are tight. Yes. You know, you can't relax. You can be achy. You don't sleep well. Mm. You know, all of those things that are associated with stress. I be do believe that some kind of spiritual foundation in your life helps you manage stress. Mm -hmm. Now, stress is also, I believe, a state of mind. This is easier said than done, mm -hmm. but I give this example. When I was a kid, my sister would chase me, she's older, mm -hmm. catch me, of mm -hmm. course, and tickle me, and I hated it. Mm -hmm. And she could control me just wiggling a finger, mm -hmm. and it just made me mad. Mm -hmm. Till one day I decided that I wasn't going to be ticklish. I said, no more. And I wasn't ticklish. That's the attitude we have to have about wow. certain stresses. Uh -huh. There are some things we cannot control. We need to let them go. Mm. But so often, it's human nature. We moan and groan about it. We think about what could have happened if this, this didn't happen. We think about what we could have done if, to not make it happen. And we go on and on and on in our mind. And all of this does, we feel that. Mm, mm. You know, you think about a, a, an argument you had and your heart's beating faster, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So you have direct physiological effects of your thoughts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how something out there affects you um, mentally has a domino effect in your body. And so I'm not saying you can, you can just ignore stressful things, but I am saying that you can be mindful mm -hmm. of of um, playing these things out in your mind over and over again that you can't change. Mm -hmm. So being mindful of that is the first step in doing something about it, mm -hmm. and at, and that's where I think the spiritual foundation comes mm -hmm. in because then you can, as some people say, give it up to God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and mm -hmm. so you just have to let these things go. Mm -hmm. um, I would highly recommend the book Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers mm. because I think with knowledge of what is what you're doing to your body by constantly having your brain, you know, going through flips and jumps about things that didn't happen, might happen, could have happened. Um, when you understand that, then when you catch yourself going there, you can go, oh, well, I don't want my blood pressure to go up. I don't want my pulse to go up, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so those are my, my four four steps to wellness and, and good health. Mm -hmm. And um, and realize that wellness and good health is not equivalent to the absence of symptoms. Oh, great point. Okay? Yes. So if you have reflux and you're taking, you know, whatever drug du jour, uh, you actually still have reflux. Yes. You just don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, that is a signal that we need to change what we eat and how we eat, or not smoke or drink alcohol. All factors that affect reflux. Yeah. So taking the pill doesn't give you good health. Changing your habits will give you good health. That's just an example. So. You know, you can take, you know, pills for this and pills for that, but oftentimes changing your behavior really fixes the problem. Mm -hmm. So you don't need medications and you are healthier as a result. Yes. Because I think con conventional medicine sort of teaches you, for instance, that once you get high blood pressure and once you get diabetes, you always have it. Well, you know, I have had patients get... I wouldn't say get rid of their diabetes, but get rid of it to the point where they didn't require medication. And that's what I mean. And they could control it with diet. Yes. Now, that took commitment on their part to eating a healthy diet 
and most often losing weight. Yeah. Obesity is a, is a huge factor in diabetes. So I've had patients lose 65 pounds, go to the gym three days a week, eat a strict diet, and all of a sudden they're on no medicine. Yeah. Okay. Now, even if you don't get off the medicine, your body is still better off mm -hmm. from you doing those things. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with high blood pressure. I've had clients lose weight, get rid of the salt, get rid of the alcohol, et cetera, et cetera, and they're off blood pressure pills. Mm -hmm. But they're still working their program. Exactly. And that's the important thing. So I look remember. at it this way. Um, I have a tendency to high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when I exercise, keep my weight down, my mm -hmm. blood pressure goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. So I know that I don't have wiggle room mm -hmm. with regard to my weight uh -huh. and blood pressure. Yes. Now, you... <laughs> <laughs> what is she trying to say? <laughs> you, you know, your blood pressure is normal. Yes, it is. Yes. You probably have <laughs> lots of wiggle room. You could probably gain 20 pounds, <laughs> eat salt every day, and lay it on, and still not have a problem. Okay? Yeah, well, yeah. So, so what I'm, I'm saying is that we, we are all different, <laughs> yeah. and we have a greater or lesser propensity to develop certain things. In my family history, diabetes and high blood pressure. Mine too. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it means that I have to be more mindful of the habits that will create that mm -hmm. and not do them. Right. That's that's the key. It's more than the knowledge. You gotta right. actually do it. Yes, it's Imagine it's that. gotta be action. Yes. Other people I know that are fifty pounds overweight, mm -hmm. there's no diabetes or high blood pressure in their family. Mm -hmm. Their blood pressure is great. Yeah. Their their blood sugar's great. Wow. But genetically mm -hmm. They don't have that. Now, that doesn't mean that when they're 60 and they're still 50 pounds overweight, it doesn't tip over. Yes. However, they are not as prone to it as I am. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that each of us has different genetic makeup, and the environment in which we bathe our genes, yes. tobacco, alcohol, potato chips, junk food, or, you know, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, lean meat, whatever, that decides which path you're going down. Yes. I've heard it said that uh, genetics loads the gun and the environment pulls the trigger. That is an excellent one. I'm mm -hmm. going to steal that one. <laughs> I do. And the bad yeah. news is that um, sometimes that gun is mm -hmm. loaded with little BBs, yes. and sometimes the gun is loaded with a rockets. Cannon. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And so uh -huh. depending on your <clears throat> genetic family history, uh -huh. how big a gun it is, what are you facing? Yes. And so, you know, for me with diabetes and high blood pressure, those are two big time disorders yes. that then result in other things. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's really important for me to get my act together. And I'd like to say, just brag, I've lost 25 pounds over the last year and have kept it off for the last three months. Oh, wow. Outstanding. Yay. <laughs> now, Yay. It, it took work and, and, yes. and all that, and but, uh, but, I, but my work. blood pressure is down to normal. Oh, wow. You know, so I, I have a few more pounds to go, but, you know, I don't want to be on medications, and I knew I was not healthy, and uh, or as healthy as I, I should be. Yes. And I got to work. Yes. And you're working it. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you. I love that. This is a doctor, by the way, who also makes house calls. Imagine uh, that. Yes. In 2009, which I just think is it's so fitting for someone like yourself who cares about the whole package. You know, mm -hmm. the whole kit and caboodle is what Dr. Hall takes into consideration. Um, so were you done? Are you well, I'm just throwing my website. Yeah, please. It's uh, www.mobile-medicine.net. Or you can call uh, and leave a message for me at 678-623-3038. All right. I thank you for that. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad you're here. And I'm just going to segue really quickly into the mental health portion of what we are offering today. And to piggyback on something Dr. Hall was saying, I would first start out by saying just lose the armor in your life. Uh, lose the idea that you've got to do this thing called life all by yourself. 
So as Dr. Hall mentioned, spiritual health absolutely helps people to feel support that comes from on high, that they don't have to figure out every single solitary detail by themselves. And I think when I say lose the armor, I'm also talking about just in general losing the tough guy, tough woman stance that uh, I can I, you know, hear me roar, I'm invincible, I don't need help, I don't need therapy, I've got this under control. Lose the armor, lose the armor. And when you begin to reach out and open yourself up for help and for other resources and other support, you also find that you carry yourself in a softer, more gentle, kinder kind of way so that you're, you're more approachable and people are more prone to build relationship with you, which in and of itself is very nurturing and very supportive. There's a whole body of research on the, what the perception, just the perception of social support does mm. to elevating mood and, and, and stabilizing one's mental health function. Just the idea that you think you've got somebody somewhere that you can reach out to, even if they're not in the same city, is therapeutic in and of itself. The second thing I would say, which is real big for anybody who knows me and has worked with me, is lose the loneliness mm. in your life. Because when you limit yourself to one person, one source of happiness, one source of joy, and put all your eggs in one basket, mm -hmm. you really set yourself up to make some really bad decisions mm -hmm. when that one source fails you. And it's a given that it will because we're living in an imperfect world and last time I checked, none of us was perfect walking around. There will be a day that comes when a friend or a husband or a family member or a job or a mm -hmm. bank account <laughs> in this day and age, right. <laughs> right, <laughs> will right. we'll let you down. Yes. <laughs> and you have to have some other eggs in your basket so that you have a much more balanced perspective on where it is that you can go for help and support and resources and answers. And you can't do that when you're living in isolation. Right. You cannot do that when all you do is go to work and come home, go to church, come home, and it's you and the TV or it's, it's you and your laptop. My husband has a saying, don't let your laptop be your date because <laughs> when you go to the coffee shops today, everybody's sitting there with their laptop on a Friday night. That's their date. And almost appalled that a human being could come along and try to make conversation with you. Like imagine that, you know, that's considered disruptive to my date here, my laptop. So lose the loneliness. Uh, I, I just can't say enough about the importance of reaching out for help when you need it. There is no shame in that. And as Dr. Hall was talking about building the immune system all along and having it ready to go when you need it. I say the same thing about nurturing your relationships because reaching out for the friendships when you're in a crisis is oftentimes not going to solve the problem for you or, or lend itself to people being very available and accessible to you. You've got to nurture your relationships all the time so mm -hmm. that when the crisis hits, right. it's no big deal right. for people to come to your aid. They know you. You have intimacy, mm -hmm. and they want to help you and be a part right. of whatever that experience you know, is. I always say if you want a friend, be a friend. Absolutely. 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 Um, so that's lose the armor, uh, lose the loneliness. The third thing I would say is lose the reactive lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean simply uh, bouncing around to the whims of whatever any given day may bring into your experience that happens to be a negative. And so I don't have proper planning on the front end. I don't have contingency plans in place. I don't have proper insurance. I don't have proper savings. I don't have proper relationships or you know that are supportive and loving and embracing of me so that when things happen, oh, I gotta jump and I gotta make something happen right quick. That's not the best plan, mm -hmm. not the best strategy, but it's what I got available to me right now. So uh, let me hustle and just you know get through this day by putting another band-aid on the situation. So you know we got to get out of that mode of I'm just reacting my way through life. You you really want to structure your life so that you can live proactively, so that you're in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. You make the decisions. 
you choose the people to, to be to have a front row seat in your life because not everybody deserves to have a front row seat in your life. <laughs> right. So you get to choose how it is that you will structure your life and your relationship so that you build a life that plays to your strengths and not to your weaknesses so that you're not reacting from your weakest points and your more vulnerable, po more vulnerable points all the time. So that's lose the armor, lose the loneliness, lose the reactive lifestyle, and fourthly, I will say, lose the impatience with yourself. Mm. You know, we have to be as kind to ourselves as we probably are, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a stretch, but hopefully as we are to strangers, to friends, to family, we give people a pass, we give people a break, we, we try to give people, I hope, I hope, the benefit of the doubt. We have to do the same thing for ourselves uh -huh. so that when we blow it, when we make a mistake, okay, I made a mistake. Okay, it's probably something I can recover from. Okay, it's probably something I can learn from so that if you're on a diet and today you blew it with a hot fudge sundae, don't let that be your opportunity to say, oh, well, right. I, I've just blown it now. I might as well go ahead and have the cheeseburger and the fries <laughs> and forget you know, my whole program of, of fitness and, and health maintenance just just know that it was an isolated incident you can get up from that brush yourself off and get back on your program uh, I use this example sometimes when people are are impatient with themselves and and they try different things in their relationships to build a healthier relationship and it doesn't work out initially it's kind of like a 400 pound person hiring a, a fitness coach and, and going to Weight Watchers for one week and saying, <laughs> oh, that didn't work. That didn't even work. So I'm just going to give that up. That didn't even do me any good. It's the same kind of thing. When we're putting in a new, as my husband says, great football fan, when he says he likens it to putting in a new offense on a football team, mm -hmm. you're going to have some wobbly moments there. You're going to be unstable as you put in a new system, as you put in new order to your life, as you develop new relationships, as you try to attract healthier relationships, as you try to uh, live more focused on diet consciousness. You're going to have some slip-ups, and that's okay. Yes. That's okay. So lose the impatience with yourself. Be more forgiving of the mistakes that you have made. Don't go for perfection. Most people value completion over perfection, and most mistakes are, uh, are recoverable. You can recover from most mistakes. So don't worry about what happens if I don't get it right. That's okay. Right. Most of us don't get it right. Yeah. So those would be my, my yeah. top four. Lose that, the armor. Yeah, yeah go that ahead. That last one, you know, I read a saying, and I can't quote it exactly, but the, the point was persistence yes. will outdo talent 100% of the time. Absolutely love there that. There are many, and it will outdo genius 100% yes. of the time. We yes. know brilliant people who are doing nothing with their lives. Absolutely. We know very talented people who are doing nothing with that talent. Absolutely. We know people with average talent, average intellect, who stay on it and they achieve amazing things. Yes. And so being persistent in moving, taking even baby steps towards your goal, whether it's financial health, physical health and wellness, whatever it is, yes. you keep moving forward. That's right. That's right. And I would just sum that up by saying uh, consistency is the key to the breakthrough in anything, as Dr. Hall was just outlining. And so we're here to offer you some tips that we think, when done with consistency, can result in a healthier lifestyle, a more fulfilling lifestyle, and certainly a, a invaluable sense of satisfaction uh, for a life well lived. So I'm Dr. Pamela Thompson, psychologist and professional life coach. You can reach me at www.drpamthompson.com. That's drpamthompson.com. And I can be reached also at 404-644-0710. And thank you so much for watching us, and thank you to Dr. Hall again. Thank you. Thank you.